to Bytes of Pi. Today's video is going to cover counting transactions, Lab 5C. Just like Lab 5D, we're going to deal with another bank account class, but this class has more of the methods and features already fleshed out. It already has a method to withdraw, deposit, get a bank and account number, and return the string representation. In this lab, we'll be modifying it to keep track of the total number of deposits and withdrawals for each day and the total amount of deposited and withdrawn. So I'm going to cover this. Uh, we'll, we'll cover these step by steps. I'll do this with you and then kind of lead you for the, the rest. So the first thing we'll do is be adding private variables. I'm going to add four private static variables to the bank account class. The total number of deposits, the total dollar amount, the total number of withdrawals, withdrawals and the total dollar amount of withdrawals. Now we're going to be doing this across all bank accounts, so we need to make sure that the variables are static. So luckily here, we have little placeholders in the code kind of hinting about where we need to put this at. And here's number one, it says to add four private static variables. So I will want to add these variables here. So it probably would be a good idea to make the number of deposits. I'll make this private static int. And I'll say daily to total num deposits. Okay. And I'm also going to add the total number of withdrawals to say daily total num withdrawals. So that just so these two variables will count how many uh, times uh, we do a withdrawal or a, a deposit, and then very similarly I'm going to copy paste this instead of an int I probably want to double because I'm dealing with dollar amounts as we see here below in the example I'm dealing with a, a double I'll probably want to make this a double because I'm going to be adding adding or subtracting or I'm going to be adding up how many dollars and so instead of total num deposits I'll say total dollar deposits and daily total dollar withdrawals. So this will count up how many times I deposit and how many times are, uh, there are withdrawals within the bank. And this will count up how much money was deposited and how much money was withdrawn. So that's fairly simple. What I like to do when I'm done with this, just to make sure that I'm keeping track, that I like to go and highlight this saying, yep, I'm done with that. Let's go to the next one. I use the little highlighter thing. So let's go to step two, add public accessors. So now we're going to create functions that'll get these things like get num deposits. All right, so I'll, I'll need to access these private variables here. So there's a section here to do to add four public step methods to access. So remembering what these things are, I want to get total number of deposits. Just like it says in the thing, I won't want to create a public whoop, public static int get num deposits okay and then I want to just re return daily total number of deposits okay so I'll want to do that for the other four now I've not done with the first I just showed you an example of the first one so this will allow somebody to come get the total number of deposits so I can use that in my runner class uh, after we do that we'll need to modify the withdrawal and deposit methods to update the appropriate static variables so again like we had in 5b and 5c we have a withdrawal and a deposit so here's my withdrawal here in section 3 I want to count up how much money was withdrawn and also increment so again I'm going to be using these numbers up here at the top let's copy this go down here so I'm going to need to do something I won't tell you what to do but here I'm going I'm doing withdrawals so I probably want to deal with do so, I probably want to do something with daily total number deposits and daily number total number dollar withdrawals. So I'll probably want to increment this number because I'm adding up every withdrawal. I'm going to add another withdrawal and then I want to add the amount, the dollar amount to the daily withdrawal probably. And I'll do the same thing in the deposit function. 
So that's something that you'll need to do. Then I'll need to print out the total number of withdrawals and deposits. So we're going to go to the runner class now. And luckily, it's done a lot of the work for you. It's created two new accounts, Sue and Joe. And it's printed out a summary of that. And we're going to loop through uh, the day and ask to enter a withdrawal or a deposit in which account. And it will deposit or call the right withdrawal or deposit functions. Now, at the end of the day, we'll want to be able to print out the total number of deposits and withdrawals. So here, we're going to want to do something like what it says down here in the... I want to do something down here where I'm going to print that out. So I'll probably say something like system out. System dot out dot print line. total number of deposits today and then I'm going to want to I'm going to want to do something with this to print out the total number of withdrawals so we have that if you remember that accessor class I'll need to call one of these functions here probably get num deposits because that tells me how many deposits were done that day. And you will need to do that for all of these pieces here, the total number of withdrawals, the total dollar amount of deposits and withdrawals using those accessor functions there. All right, that's section four. And then section five. All right, so once we've done this, we've printed it out, we can take a look at this loop that we're doing here. So notice we're looping throughout the day. So we're still in the same day it'll ask to keep looping uh, for more transactions. So I've got this little, if you look, take a look at the loop here, I've got, a, I've got a, a variable called keep going. So it'll, while keep going is still Y, it'll ask you for another transaction for that day. Now we want to do something like this. If you take a look at the output, it'll ask, do you want to input another day? So we're continuing, well, do ask for an input or a withdrawal. We'll keep transacting while keep going is yes. And then when we say no, we're done with the day, it'll print out how many transactions happened to the day. Then we're going to ask them, do you want to input another day? We need another variable to say, all right, we want to keep going with this, this next day. So we'll need to do something similar with this while keep going. Instead of, we'll need to print out at the beginning of the day we'll need to print out the account summaries and at the end of the day we'll need to print out the total day so we'll probably be creating so notice there's a 5a section here we'll probably be creating another while loop at this point and we'll be keep going we'll probably need to have another variable like uh, let's let's say next new day We'll create a variable called new day and maybe we'll need to say well new day equals y and then we'll need to make sure that we close that loop out that's really this is gets kind of scary because you can essentially you can essentially if you're if you're not not careful where you're going to open and close your brackets you can have a curly bracket nightmare so notice I closed it here. I, I have little prompts here where to open and close that loop so that I make sure that I print out I, I print out a summary at the beginning of the day and I print out a summary at the end of the day and then I prompt them to keep looping. So again, notice how I'm, prompt, I'm, I'm prompting to keep going. I probably want to put a prompt right here to keep going. So just keep this in mind when you're doing that. And lastly, I want to do so I want to have a reset button. So at the end of the day, so this last part, the reset and start the next day, here at the end, after I've printed out the total for the day, I want to reset the counter for the day so it starts out with zero deposits and zero withdrawals. Now, because bank account class is private, I'm going to need to have a function somewhere, and that's right, really right here. Well, I'll probably want to say, you know, private now 
we'll just say, you know, whatever, you know, void, clear, counters, or something like that, you know, something like that. But you'll have to remember, now note, you'll need to add a method, think about whether this should be a static or an instance method. So you'll have to decide whether it's, whether I put the keyword static here, or whether I don't, okay? Because we're going to be clearing out, we're going to set all these to zero. So you'll probably want to set all, all these to zero in your clear counter function. Okay, I've skipped ahead and I'm ready to test my output with the sample output. So let's run this and see what happens. So it starts off by printing out the, the account number uh, and, the and the balance, notes there are a thousand. I'm going to start off by accessing account one, two, three. All right, would I like to make a withdrawal or a deposit? I'll make a, a deposit. Uh, and here I'm entering uh, ten dollars into the into the account one two three into Sue's account. All right, it's done. Would I like to access it? I would like to do another transaction. Yes. What account would I like to access? Let's go with four five six. Uh, withdrawal or deposit? Let's go with withdrawal. I'm going to take out of Joe's account. I'm going to take fifteen dollars out of Joe's account. Fifteen. Okay. So any more transactions? I'm going to say no at this point. And let me check my output with what happened. So I have one deposit today and one withdrawal. Yep, that matches. Total dollars deposited. Okay, I deposited $10 into Sue's account and I withdraw, withdrew 15 out of uh, Joe's account. And I want to try another day. So this is the, the, the second loop here. I'm going to go for day two. So now I notice that Sue and Joe's accounts are now different. I've added ten dollars uh, to Sue's account and withdrawn from Joe's account. I'm going to access uh, Joe's account again. And I want to make a withdrawal. I'm sorry. I want to make a deposit back into Joe's account. And I'm going to add a hundred bucks into his account. Joe had a good day. Uh, no more transactions. I hit no, and now I compare. So today's deposits one, no withdrawals today, and I deposited a hundred bucks. And I want to finish the program here. I'm going to say, nope, I don't want to input any more days, and it's done. This concludes the video for Lab Five C. <laughs>